Hello everyone. As you all know, I've had quite a few requests to do Astro Militarum Top 3 videos. Yesterday we did Relics. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch that. And today we're going to talk about the Warlord traits. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell in the corner just there so you know each time we release one of these videos. So let's get straight into it today then. So the Guard Warlord Traits. Now I know their Warlord Traits aren't that good and you're probably going to, in a competitive situation, you're probably going to give up the Warlord Trait to take a second tank ace because they are incredible. That's how you get two flat three damage manticores in your army. But this is for all of those true fluff players who like to play Astra Militarum to the purest and maybe want to try out a few different Warlord traits. These are the ones that I think are the best three to take. <clears throat> So number three is Grand Strategist. Grand Strategist is very nice because it doesn't just take into account the command points that you spend or your opponent spends. It takes into account all of the command points spent. So not you or them, but you and them. So it's pretty much going to get you a CP every battle round. What you do is you can reroll a single hit roll, wound roll, or save per battle which is nice. And in addition, you roll a d6 for each command point spent when using stratagems. Every command point that you use when using stratagems, so it's not just you, stratagems that get used in the game. On a 5+, plus, that command point is immediately refunded. Of course, you can only get one per battle round, but you're going to have one or two strats that you want to use every turn. One of them might be two CPs, and then your opponent might have one, maybe two strats that they use every turn. So you could roll up to like five or six CPs, averagely probably. If your opponent's got a CP heavy army, you might roll more than that. Or if you want to use more strats in a turn, you might roll more than that. But you're going to roll five or six dice per battle round because you roll per CP, not stratagem, per CP. So you're pretty much guaranteed going to get an extra CP per battle round. Now, that means you're going to get two. The one that you get at the start of command phase and the one from Grand Strategist. Meaning you're going to gain an extra 10 CPs throughout the game, which is very powerful for a guard army because you've got quite a few strats that, you know, like little ones that are situational. But you're always like, oh, do I really want to use a CP on this situational strat? because it might be good, but when you've got loads coming in, what's the harm, right? <clears throat> then in at number two, I've got Old Grudges. Now, Old Grudges, after deployment, but before the first battle round begins, so it's after deployment, you can see where your opponent is putting some of their bigger targets that you want to, you know, shoot at. Uh, choose a unit in your opponent's army. You can reroll failed wound rolls for Astra Militarum units from your army that target the unit you chose whilst they are within six inches of your Warlord. So, you know, like Triple Tank Commander, put them within six of your Warlord and then go for one big thing and get four rerolls to wound against it. Uh, this is a very powerful tool, that's why it's in there, because there are some big units in the game right now that are very scary, like Mortarian, like the Lord of Change who's very hard to kill, Keepers of Secrets, Monoliths, the Silent King is still very popular in um, Necron armies with heavy warriors, also Guard Castellans. These things are still out there and people People do like to take one thing in their army like that but what that does what that does for you is it gives you a target so the only reason this is coming at number two and not at number one is again because it is situational it is dependent on your opponent's army if they don't bring any big units if they bring an msu list where the most expensive unit in their army is 150 points you're not going to have a great target for this and you'll feel like you wasted a warlord trait so that's why it comes in at number two for me number one and this is one that I've never seen anybody really use. But if I was to play guard now, this is the one that I would take. <clears throat> and that is implacable determination. When your warlord and a single friendly unit, single friendly unit within three inches of them advances, then they may both add six inches to their move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a dice. Now, this can be incredible because of Bulgrin. You've got that big... Tough unit of Bulgrin in the middle of your army that wants to soak up all the firepower and make sure other things don't get shot. And obviously they're a beat stick. When they hit in combat now, strength seven minus one and being flat two damage is really, really nice. So you've got all these benefits on that unit, but they're fairly unreliable at getting there. If you roll a one for the advance, they're moving seven inches that turn. You, move, you roll a two, they're moving eight inches that turn. And there's nothing you can do about it because it's not like you can order them to move, move, move. But with this, you can go, right, my Warlord's going to advance, and I'm going to pick the Bulgrin because they're a friendly unit within three inches of him. Now the Bulgrin are going to move 12. 
Now, having that unit guaranteed moving 12 for one or two turns, get him into, right into the middle of the board, or, well, moving 12 two turns gets you to your opponent's deployment zone now. So, you know, there's no chance that they won't get there if you take the Warlord trait. So why it's coming in at number one for me is it's always useful. There's not going to be a game where you don't find this Warlord trait useful. Even once you're Bulgrin, once you're Bulgrin are where they need to be. Maybe you only need this Warlord trait for one turn. Because after one turn, the Bulgrin will move 12 inches in the middle of the board. After that, they can move six and charge. So they're fine. They're where they want to be. After that, you can start doing it on guard units. You can go, oh, look, this uh, infantry squad is within six, uh, within three inches of my Warlord. So they're automatically moving 12. No need to roll. So they're automatically moving 12. And then I'm going to move, move, move them. And move them a minimum of another seven. So you're like, at that point, they move 19 inches. Minimum, not average, minimum. And other than if you roll anything above that, they can go up to 24 inches. So it's very reliable in my opinion. And that's why that Warlord trait comes in number one for me, because it's all about playing the mission. And that's what that Warlord trait allows you to do more efficiently. Like I say, these are my top three Warlord traits. If you have any that are serving you really well, please leave them in the comments for everybody to share. And until the next video, I'll see you later, guys.